Hi there and welcome to the art studio again today. So I will be doing 12 different paintings on a very small clipboard as you can see here. So the space that will be covered will be about 5 inches by 5 inches and each of the 12 clipboards that I do will have a unique painting. So stay tuned and see what we do with these. Alright so I've taken the little clipboards and I've taped them off with some masking tape covering most of the back and giving myself a clean edge here. So this will be five inches by five inches, which will only need about an ounce to an ounce and a half of paint. So I'm mixing my paints with the flow mix. You'll see the recipe at the end. All right, so this one, I'm just making this one up as I go along. I'm just gonna do black background. And then I'm going to do a blowout of some of the colors I've already mixed up. So let me get this evenly spread. This is a copper or brown. And I do love this garnet, so I'm going to use a little bit more of it. I have a cell activator that is black. And I actually think I'm going to also put a cell activator on it that's white. my little mini bullet dryer today. Might tilt it just a little bit over this way, just to give it some, just seemed like it was a little off kilter there. What do you think about that one? All right, so we'll let that one dry. so as you can see the paintings are dry I have added some vinyl stickers I do have a silhouette it's kind of like a Cricut machine that cuts out some letters and these are some of the logos that they use at this particular establishment that I'm making these clipboards for and so I've mixed up some clear resin to go over top and I'm using some cast and craft which is opaque pigments and um, I will make a little bit of waves on this one uh, when I'm done and I have ready I have an ABC tray if I have extra resin I always try to make a couple of the uh, keychains or whatever so all right so we're just going to add a layer And I always say my general rule of thumb when covering something is about one fourth of the size. Now this one is a little bit, that one's a little bit much. That one's just about right. And then I come back, I like to spread it out with my fingers. Some people spread it out with a stick or 
a comb or a jagged edge um, like you would a countertop. I like to feel where the vinyl or where the, I like to feel where the coverage is. So that's always why I like to do it with my fingers. All right, so I'm not gonna put as much on this last one just in case I have too much that I need to spill over. And making sure my white is mixed up. And here we go. So I'm gonna move this around over top of this one because I know there's a little bit much on this one and it will spill over. Now you never want to make your layer of resin too thin. That will cause little dimples in it. And you see I have it elevated over a cup. That way it can run over the sides just as much as it wants to. And the back is taped, so I'm not worried about that. Well, actually, that looks pretty good. And it dripped just a little bit off. Just a little bit. Beautiful. All right, and I'm going to come back with a heat gun and make sure that I go over this because resin will have bubbles in it. That's beautiful. All right, same with this one. I'm going to do it over top of the one that has a little bit less. adding waves to this one. So what I do is I usually just kind of drip just a little bit here and there. And sometimes I pick a place where there would be natural waves out in the ocean. And I just add some waves, sometimes a second layer. Now, if you hear some strange sounds, there's construction going on next door, so. All right, so let's. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll take the heat gun and move that around a little bit. So if you watch as I'm doing this, you'll see the white spread and it'll look like the sprays of some waves. And sometimes I'll come back with another layer of that in a little bit after it cures some more. It will make more white spots. So that's how you make your way. All right, so this is set for 24 hours and it should be ready to come off. So what I like to do first is I like to find the edge of my paper tape. As you can see, the resin is way up into the tape. So let me get this blue one off first, the top part. And now with that gone, I can actually see the edge of the paper tape pretty well. I don't know if you can see it on your, your um, actual camera, but there it is right there. So I'm gonna actually go along there with my box cutter. You can use an X-Acto knife if you want. What I like about the box cutters, I can really dig in. That looks like that's good. And then we just begin to peel. This one's stuck down tight, isn't it? <laughs> All right. 
There it is. Okay, so let's start with this. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice. Stuck a little bit. So if it's stuck a little bit, sometimes I'll either cut again or sometimes just bending that resin a little helps. Okay. There we go. All right, so now let's take the tape off the back. A little bit of spillover, but not too bad. And then the last thing I do is I'll take my sticker from my shop and add it to the back. And what I do to, with my stickers is I give them a little extra layer of, yep, sorry, I'm trying to peel and talk. Um, I give them a little extra layer of some acrylic clear spray. I do know that they will be sanitizing these in between customers and that will help this ink not to smear. This sticker will eventually come off and that's okay. We just won't worry about that because we're going to write some of our information right there about the shop in paint marker. So I hope you like this one. I love how it turned out. I think it's beautiful and it'll be a nice addition to this shop or this restaurant. So the, I hope this restaurant loves it.